Hey, my name is Lexi. I am a multi-talented artist and music producer based in Atlanta, Georgia. If you're wanting to write, record, and develop your music and sound, come book with me by following me on social media at LexiATL, emailing me at LexiSolo at gmail.com, texting me at 404-692-1299, or going to my website at www.LexiATL.com. Right now, you're tuned into my podcast, Lex Chat, a show dedicated to music and entertainment, where we talk about the industry and the business, and we help each other to become better artists and better creatives. You can catch these chats live on Instagram at LexiATL to be part of the conversation, or catch the replays on Mondays at 8 a.m. on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. Wherever you're watching or listening, please like, subscribe, follow, and engage with the content by leaving comments and reviews. If you'd like to go the extra mile and supporting me, then please consider becoming a patron of mine at patreon.com slash LexiATL, where you can make a monthly pledge. Every bit of support truly does help me to be able to create more valuable content for you all. This week on Lex Chat, let's chat about a post I saved on my Instagram a while ago from at artist underscore growth underscore tips. This page used to be called something else, but I can't remember what their old name was, but the post is titled things that could ruin your career as an artist. And it lists five reasons, five bullet points, why some artists don't make it. Of course, these are not the only reasons, but they're a very good list as far as a basic foundation goes for artists. So if you're interested in hearing about the things that could be ruining your career as an artist, stay tuned. I'm releasing a new album and the release is set for July of 2023 to get some buzz about it I'm previewing pieces of the songs on my Lex chat and YouTube through the release date of the album here is a preview from one of my songs called it's a good day we outside let me know what you think exit I know today it would be a good day pick up my bag out the door I'm on the way we outside I hope y'all enjoyed that one. Before we kick off the show, let's give a shout out to the sponsors. Shout out to my patrons, Mr. Flat Shoals and Alton Thomas. Thank you guys so much for supporting me in a way that I feel supported. If you out there listening or watching, if you want to become a patron, you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, get early access to content, shout outs on Lex Chat, and automatic entries into giveaways, you can do so by becoming a patron. You get all those perks. Go to patreon.com slash LexiATL. That's patreon.com slash L-E-X-C-A-T-L. Ill, all right. If you would like to become an official sponsor of Lex Chat outside of Patreon and you want to advertise your services or products, you can contact me through Instagram at LexiATL. That's L E X C A T L. Send me an email at LexiSolo at gmail.com or send me a text to 404 692 1299. Thank you to all of my sponsors. And again, shout out to It's a Good Day, We Outside. Y'all heard a little snippet of that moment ago and it's perfect for the weather because it's finally consistently pretty outside i don't think spring and winter are tussling with each other anymore so good for them right good for them but uh yeah that this is all basically phase one of my album rollout me finding ways to get you all excited about what i'm doing and that sounds kind of selfish, doesn't it? But me trying to find ways to get people excited about my album, to bring awareness to it, and to just give y'all little nuggets here and there. It's not out yet, but I can't wait to share it with y'all. We're in the mixing process right now. I have been sending out weekly articles. If you are subscribed to my email list, you've been getting these weekly articles talking about the inspiration behind the song, the story behind the music. So That's been really cool to share with y'all the past few weeks. I think I have those going on through June, I want to say. And then um, special bonus to my patrons. Y'all see it right now. 
If you're not a patron, you got to wait until I think June is when the interview drops. But my patrons can see an interview that I did behind the album with Lexi talking about the upcoming album. It's official. The name is called Love Reset. So I'm very excited. I finally have a name for it. I did the photo shoot for it last week. And um, I'm just excited. I'm putting way more effort into this one than I did the first one. The first one was like a, let me go ahead and see how this process is and how it goes to release an album. Now I have, you know, some skin in the game and I've seen some examples from people how they do their rollouts and, you know, just testing new measures basically. So we're in phase one right now, like I mentioned with the articles going through the email newsletter. If you are not a part of the newsletter, you can become part of the newsletter by going to my website, LexiATL.com. That's L-E-X-C-A-T-L.com. There's going to be a little pop-up thing in the bottom right-hand corner, and you can subscribe using that pop-up on my website, okay? Other than that, you know what? Watch my website. If you're not signed up for the newsletter, watch the website for updates, okay? Next up, I want to talk to y'all about some merchandise. You know, I got to let y'all know about the merch. Go to LexiATL.com, L-E-X-C-A-T-L.com for merchandise. I got sun visors that say hashtag winner. I got wristbands that say hashtag winner, hashtag keeper. I got lighters with built-in bottle openers. They're my Lexi burn lighters. And I got posters. Lexi posters, artistic ones, and sexy Lexi posters. You can find all of this merchandise on my website. Like I said, www.lexiatl.com, L-E-X-C-A-T-L.com, all right? Next up, I wanna tell y'all about a showcase I'll be participating in. It's the Down and Dirty Artist Showcase presented by Abriel BTV. It's gonna be in a couple of weeks, Wednesday, May 10th, 2023 at 8 p.m. This event is gonna be held at 901 Donald Lee Hallowell in Atlanta, Georgia at 30318, that is the zip code. So y'all come out. Enjoy some vibes, enjoy talent. There's going to be other artists singing and rapping and performing that night. And uh, it's going to be recorded and presented on Abriel BTV, which you can find on YouTube currently. And yeah, it would be great. Ticket information. It would be great if y'all came. Sorry, I didn't finish my thought. Uh, Ticket information for this show can be found on my website at LexiATL.com, L-E-X-C-A-T-L.com. You can click on the link that is on my website and it'll take you to where you need to go to get tickets. Early bird tickets are going for $25 right now. And then I got to check the date, but after a certain time, it's going to jump up to like $35, I think. So definitely hop on those as soon as you can. Um, I may even do a giveaway for that. I'm not sure yet, but those are my announcements for y'all. Last thing I want to talk about, actually, the trivia and the giveaway. Album trivia, which started a couple weeks ago on my Instagram. Every day, Monday through Friday, I am giving away a cash prize to one lucky winner, okay? So I will be asking trivia questions about my upcoming album on my Instagram stories. The first person to send me the correct answer will win the cash prize for today, for the day, sorry. That means if you are the first person to answer correctly, you could win every day if you're the first one, you know what I'm saying? So that means you could win up to $100. I think the pot is down to $50 right now. Um, Over the next few weeks, I think I'm gonna re-up on the pot as May comes in, as we get a new month. But yeah, the pot is down to $50 right now, but I'm sure we could all use a little extra cash. So here's how you play. Stay tuned in to my Instagram stories on my Instagram page, LexiATL. That's L-E-X-C-A-T-L on Instagram. The answers for every question can be found on my Instagram page at LexiATL, on my website at www.lexiatl.com and or in the weekly email newsletters, which you can sign up for by going to my website, LexiATL.com, checking for that little pop-up in the bottom right-hand corner to subscribe to the email list. I put out press articles about the songs from the album. You read through the articles to find the answers and hopefully you are the first one to answer correctly because that will make sure, that will ensure that you will be the cash prize winner for that day, okay? So if you're the first person to answer the question correctly, I will send your prize money through Cash App. Good luck to everybody who participated and I hope you have fun doing it. I love giving y'all money. 
as long as y'all participate, that's my way of like giving back and supporting y'all who support me and stay tuned in and engaged with my content. So I'm really excited to be able to give something back. Now it's $5 per day, but you know what? That's still $5 that you didn't have. And like I said, you got the opportunity to win every day. That's $25 a week. That means you can get 100 to $125 in a month. So who couldn't use that extra cash, right? Would love for y'all to participate. Um, last week's winners were official Mr. Flat Shoals 74, Booker underscore audio and C dot run the track. Congratulations to y'all. Now I only said three names. That's because official Mr. Flat Shoals 74 won three times last week. Okay. He has been on it. He's been on point and he's been getting all my money. So y'all need to step it up and beat official Mr. Flat Shoals 74 because he is just killing it right now. <laughs> But um, like I said, I'm really excited to be giving y'all money and make sure y'all stay tuned in to my page so that you can get paid some money too. Now, I want to go ahead and we're going to move into the hot topic for the day. Listen to that. We got our hot topic music. This beat is such a cool little beat. It's called Pumpkin Bunny. I don't remember the producer's name. I'm going to find it and let y'all know another time. But what is the hot take for today? My hot take for today is you should lose money if you're not a good person. We should hit you in your pockets if you prove to be a bad person. If you have bad business practices or if you are a bad person. I think why separate the two? That is my hot topic for today. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because I've been inspired by recent events in which somebody was not paid for the service that they did. And the person who did not do the paying, they asked me out on a date. And they've also, you know, made claims to wanting to help me on some other stuff. But in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I brought my friend into a situation under the impression that he would be paid for and taken care of and could join in on the creative process. Unfortunately, my friend still has not been paid. And so now my face card is on the line with this situation. And some people would say, oh, Lexi, you know, that's not your place to make sure that your friend gets paid off of this work, but it is my place because I brought them into the situation and that is my face card with that friend to ensure that, you know, when, when Lexi calls you for an opportunity, you're going to get paid and you're going to get recognized. The fact that he has not been paid yet, it makes me look bad. And it makes it look like I'm inviting people into situations that are not good for them. And I don't appreciate that because I take a lot of pride in doing good business with people and treating people fairly, treating people well and collaborating respectfully with people. So It really irritates me. And so the hot take that I said is, you know, we need to associate, we need to link business and personal together because if you have bad business practices, you most likely are not that great of a person. Now there will be naysayers. They're like, oh, Lexi, you can't, you can't judge somebody based off of how they handle their money and why not? I should absolutely be able to judge you off of how you treat people in business. If you're going to cheat me out of a business deal, you will cheat me in person. That's how I look at it. If you are going to cheat me out of something in your personal life, what's to stop you from cheating me in a business relationship? It's all the same thing. Business and personal, why are we separating character between these two? Just because a few dollars are attached? I don't like that. I've never liked that commentary. I've never liked that way of thinking. And um, I actually researched this a few years ago where Western culture is pretty much the only culture where you can have business relationships with someone without knowing them personally. And in Eastern cultures, it's actually customary for you to get to know someone and decide whether or not you like them personally, get to know their friends, their family, who they are. And if you like the person personally, then business should be good and blessed and all that good stuff as well. I wish we lived by that principle as well, because then we wouldn't have so many moral issues in our society. I feel like I talked a couple weeks ago about how, you know, I asked the question, And I think it was a hot take as well, actually. I asked the question, 
Should we separate the art from the artist? And I use the example of Chris Brown and I explained to y'all how my position as a fan for Chris Brown changed after what happened with Rihanna. Now I know that was over 10 years ago, but it's something that affected me being a fan of Chris Brown. And the reason why is because as a woman, I can't now feel good about supporting somebody who has been documented as abusing a woman. You know what I mean? So I'm putting my money where my mouth is and I've refrained from supporting, I've refrained from spending money with this person based on what they've shown their moral compass to be. It doesn't align with me and it doesn't align with my values. And so I put my pocket where my mouth is. And I recently saw a video that's going around on Twitter right now where it's like this really pretty woman. She's like at a baseball game, I think, and she's taking pictures and taking cute videos or whatever. You know how we all do when we're feeling cute and we're out in public and we're taking pictures and we're snapping and, you know, she put the shades on and she was smiling. She showed off her ring. And there were these two B words sitting behind her acting childish and trying to make her feel bad about feeling cute. And I don't understand that behavior. Long story short though, right? People on the internet found out who those women were and they have been leaving like one star reviews at whatever job she's at. And it could possibly cost that woman her job for being a terrible person on social media. I think I'm not against it. You know what I mean? Like if you're a terrible person online, Terrible things should happen to you in real life as well. Why do we think that we can separate so many things and have no consequences just because I was over here when I did it, not when I was not over there? You know, it doesn't make sense to me. Oh, I cheated on my wife in my personal life, but that doesn't mean I'm going to cheat you in business. Like, no, if you cheated somebody who's close to you like that, or if you've been a terrible person online, that means it's in you. And how many opportunities do you give yourself to act on the bad parts in you? How many opportunities do you feed that bad wolf? How many opportunities do you listen to the devil on your shoulder as opposed to the angel or being kinder, being nicer? You know, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with people suffering consequences of their bad behavior. And I stand on that. And I feel like everybody else should stand on that too. So yeah, that's my hot take. We should keep it all together. You should be who you say you are in and out, no matter where you are, no matter who you're around. And if you're not who you say you are in any medium, you should suffer the consequences. That's my hot take. Put your mouth where your money is, people. Stop supporting these terrible human beings just because they got a little bit of money just because they got a little popularity, a little bit of fame, just because they dress nice, just because they have nice material things, cars, clothes, homes, just because they seem popular. Are they good people? Are they good to people? Is that somebody that you should really be having as a role model for your own life? Now, I'm gonna stop myself there before I get on to rambling too much, but that is my hot take. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, what are we talking about on Lex Chat today? Oh yeah, this week on Lex Chat, we are talking about a post that I saved on my Instagram from at artist underscore growth underscore tips, things that could ruin your career as an artist. There are five reasons why some artists don't make it. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned. We'll be back after these messages with Lex Chat. Alrighty, let's get into this topic. Today, we are talking about things that could ruin your career as an artist. Shout out to at artist underscore growth underscore tips on Instagram and at beat chain, which that's an account that is tagged on the actual graphic of this whole thing. Thank y'all so much for inspiring this episode of Lex Chat. 
things that could ruin your career as an artist. They list five different bullet points on this graphic. Number one, not creating a routine for your career. This includes studying music business, money management, perfecting your craft and growing your audience. Number two, being overtly negative, jealous and spiteful towards others. Number three, neglecting your own health and focusing on wealth first. Number four, creating excuses for why you can't do something rather than finding two to three solutions for each issue that will help you succeed. And number five, not being on as many streaming platforms as possible. So according to at artist underscore growth tips, just because I don't feel like saying the underscore each time, artist growth tips is the page, all right? These are the things that could ruin your career as an artist. And as I mentioned in the introduction, of course, these are not the only things that could ruin your career, but this is a good foundational list for newer artists, especially to think of. How am I shaping myself? What kinds of things am I putting into practice and making habits out of so that I'm more likely to be a success as an artist, as a creative? And these five things, these are things that, you know, people think the, the music industry is one way. They don't think they have to do certain things to make it, but it ends up being very detrimental to that person. So let's get into the first one, right? The first one being, I'm gonna read it again, not creating a routine for your career. This includes studying music business, money management, perfecting your craft, and growing your audience. So, artist growth tips, they wrote in their caption for this particular point. Of the many artists who DM us for advice, the first thing we establish is that they have no creative routine dedicated to their passions. They want to increase revenue, streams, and their following, yet spend hours doing idle things not dedicated to their craft. Create a simple daily routine dedicated to music making, music studying, even if it's just one to two hours per day. Hand claps, hand claps, snap, snap, snap. So. What's one thing that ruins an artist's career? Not creating a routine for your career. I agree with what they are saying here. And just to let y'all know, I agree with everything that's on the list. So forgive me if I repeat it too many times, but I agree. As I mentioned before, people think that just because the industry is a certain way that they can act a certain way, but you really do have to be intentional and have good habits surrounding this thing. So. My example that I wrote down here is just because the music industry is unpredictable and unpredictable is in quotes, doesn't mean you can't make your own routine. So unpredictable meaning that the music industry, let's say the, what's something common that everybody says? Everybody says that there's no formula for how you make it as an artist these days, thanks to the rise of the internet, right? And thanks to the accessibility that technology has given so many people to be able to bypass record labels and, you know, just bypass the traditional, what we know as traditional ways that people get broken into the industry. And... Just because there's unpredictability about how to break into an industry, that doesn't mean that there still aren't norms that have to be abided by to increase your chances of getting into the industry and then from there having longevity, you know? So just because the music industry is unpredictable doesn't mean you can't make a routine. You have to create habits that are going to translate on a larger scale. I don't know how many of y'all have been listening to me for a while, but I have mentioned before that I actually created a whole little curriculum for myself in which my mindset when I graduated college was, okay, I just spent 12 years in grade school. Is it 12 years? 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's 12. And then with kindergarten pre-K, that's like 14 years. So we spend... 
almost 20 years, depending on if you go to college too, we spend like 20 to 25 years in school. We'll say 15 to 20 years, just to keep it clean. We spend like 15 to 20 years in school and we spend 15 to 20 years under a certain schedule. You know, most school schedules, you gotta wake up early in the morning, be to school by eight or nine, and then you go to a few different periods or you stay in class and you study certain things. You might have an hour for lunch and then you study again and then you're out by three, four o'clock. If you had sports, you could expect practice after school. If you were in clubs, you could expect meetings after school. And we stayed on that schedule Monday through Friday for 15 to 20 years of our lives, right? The thing that was interesting for me, like when I graduated college, I knew that, okay, now there's no system in place. There's no schedule in place telling me what I should be doing. So how can I create one? And I use the basis of our school system. How can I break it down? And I said to myself, okay, artists need to know how to do more than just sing. They also got to dance. They also got to be in good shape. They also have to have interview skills and public speaking skills. So I created a curriculum. What should I be studying in my continuing journey as an artist? And this curriculum set it up in the same way that the school system had me on for those 15 to 20 years, right? And that's how I created daily habits for myself. And you know, I would give myself breaks just like we had a weekend in school. You don't have to have necessarily Saturday and Sunday be your weekend. You don't have to have your work week be Monday through Friday, right? You can make it what you want. I would say give yourself at least one rest day a week. I'll get into that in the in another section, in a later section. But yeah, create something that you can keep as a consistent routine for yourself. Create habits. So things that you can do to create a routine is wake up at the same time each day. There may be some exceptions working in the music industry because you do work some weird hours when you're in the industry, excuse me, especially if you're like an audio engineer or a producer um, or songwriter or whatever, then we, we do get stuck in the studio at random hours of the night. So sometimes I'll have eight hour days. I might be in the studio from 12 in the afternoon till seven at night. Sometimes I might not go in until nine o'clock at night and we don't get out till five or six in the morning. So getting up at like seven on that particular next day might be a little difficult, but create the habit of waking up at the same time. And then for me, I like to have those first few hours of the day be for myself. I wake up, make up my bed up, make up my bed up. Why do I sound like that? I wake up, make up my bed, I go to the gym and I work out for an hour, hour and a half, come back, shower, eat breakfast. I might read something. I might do a Sudoku puzzle. I might check in with myself and see how I'm doing mentally. Um, I might write down a list of everything I feel like I want to get done for the day, for the week, or just in life, you know? And I have my time. I might watch a TV show, but that's that time is for me, for me to check in with myself, for me to say, okay, if I did nothing else today, at least I know for the first few hours of the day, I dedicated this time to myself. And, you know, keep a routine like that. Create a wake up time for yourself. And then what are some activities that I can do? Like for me, I recommend people work out three to five times each week. That's my routine. Like I said, I'll read a book. I would go to Barnes and Noble, an actual bookstore, read music books like um, it's like the music Bible. What is it called? All everything you need to know about the music business. And then I would get marketing books like how do I market in the music business? And I would read a chapter each morning, you know, or if you're not really into books, then you can listen to helpful music blogs. You can read music articles. Even gossip channels to a degree have their place in all of this as well, because you can study what's going on with other creatives and how they're handling certain situations, right? And I would just study everything involved with music. So like I said, with the curriculum that I created, I need dance skills, I need interview skills, I need public speaking skills, I need to look good. So I need fitness and stuff like that. And just create a routine based off of the idea that you will never stop learning. That's probably the best thing I could say, create a routine. So forget about the unpredictability of the industry 
make sure that you create something for you to do every single day because those habits are going to greatly benefit you when you have to apply them on a larger scale. Let's get into the second point that they have. The second point that they bring up, things that ruin an artist's career. Being overtly negative, jealous, and spiteful towards others. And their caption on this one read, science is showing us how fault seeking creates neural pathways in our brain that trains our nervous system to be in reaction mode instead of proactive mode. Learn to spot judgmental, critical, or harsh triggers and actions and correct them using kindness, compassion, and love. Then watch as you begin to attract the right people and connections into your life. I really love that they included this one because I have been around people who are not necessarily the most positive people. And although you want to help them, it does become very draining to be exposed to that energy consistently. And um, my grief with that particular person has actually been a couple people that I've gone through that with. My beef with those people has been that I understand that you're having a tough time, but if we keep having the same conversation for a month, two months, three months, like you need your, your grace period to feel how you're feeling, right? You can't ignore those negative feelings, those feelings of jealousy, those feelings of spite, because when you ignore them, they manifest in unexpected ways, right? So you can't ignore them. But for me personally, don't allow them to linger either. Don't let that be all that's on your mind all the time. So we could talk about it for a week, two weeks, three weeks. I'll give you up to a month to feel sorry for yourself about something, right? After that, If we keep having the same conversations, but we don't have solutions, or if I present solutions to you and you always find a negative in those solutions, we can't be around each other. My energy is going to be drained. You're going to drain me and I, I can't have that happen. So I would say it's okay to get jealous of other people's success over yours. That's a completely natural and human way to feel, right? I would say keep a few trusted people you can blow off steam with, but do not boast online. And I would say be careful with the people that you confide in. Be careful that they're not enabling you and just allowing you to always go off on the deep end, on the negative end, right? But the other side of this, right? Keep your trusted fruit, your trusted few that you talk to, but don't go online boasting about these things. It's bad enough to be a negative energy like within your circle. But then to go online and spew that negativity, if you are going to boast about it, put it in the music. (laughs) If you're going to boast about anything, you're going to talk crap about anything, put it in the music, put it in the craft, have a constructive outlet. You know what I mean? So, but nobody wants to be around that. It it leaves a bad taste in people's minds and people's mouth, and they're not going to want to be around negative energy. Like I said, it's okay to be human, but don't let that consume you. And as simple, that's really all there is to it. Like people just don't want to be around that negative energy. And then when you are always focusing on negativity, you'll create scenarios in your head that are going to hold you back in real life. Because remember, you're stressing yourself out mentally about things that have not happened or you're focusing too much on how things could go wrong. So all you're attracting is wrong. All you're attracting is bad karma, bad energy, bad experiences, because that's all you're thinking of and that's all you're expecting. When you shift your focus to something more productive, you can be realistic, but to be negative about everything, that's a different type of energy that really, if you can help it, correct it, And it's not easy by any means to correct this type of thing, but you got to try, you know, you got to try being overtly negative, jealous and spiteful towards others could ruin your career. Being negative is the main thing that I'm speaking on right now, because I feel like I've recently gone through 
trying to help somebody get out of a negative spell and it just is not, you know, they just weren't making progress in my opinion. Jealous and spiteful, it's, it all stems from, I don't wanna say low vibration, but it, that's what it does stem from. The, the, the moment that you change your focus, like I said, is when things will begin to get better, but you have to put in sometimes the very difficult work of changing your mindset and shifting your focus when you feel yourself going to negative things. And you can't just think negative things all the time, right? You got to act differently. Once you act differently from how you've been acting, now you can start expecting different results. But also with that, don't just try something once or twice and something doesn't change quick enough for you. So you decide, oh, it doesn't work. I'm going to go back to my to my old ways. That's that's not good. That's not good. You have to truly make an effort, a consistent effort to shift your mindset from that negativity, shift your focus away from those bad things and to try to put it into something more constructive. Like I said, you can be realistic, but there's a difference between being realistic and being negative. Realistic means it's possible and you know it's possible. You understand the obstacles being negative is claiming that everything is too hard or everything is too impossible and you just shut it down from ever being a possibility in your mind. Nobody wants to be around that because as artists, we are delusional ourselves, right? And there's there's a population out there that does not understand what we do. So we have to be delusional to a degree, right? But we can use we can use realism in... I have a dream, but let's be honest about what could keep me from this dream. But once you prepare for the bad, sometimes we prepare too much for the bad stuff that we don't leave any room to plan for the good stuff that could happen in our lives, right? So I don't really wanna harp on that subject too long because I kinda do have myself under a little time restraint for this here thing. So let's go ahead and move on to the third point. The third point, Neglecting your own health and focusing on wealth first. They they read, if there's one thing we know, it's that your energy output is greatly linked to your health. Without it, you can't do much, let alone tour the world and become a star. If your budget does not support super healthy foods, search for budget healthy items during times of struggle to ensure you are able to perform mentally at your best ready so neglecting your own health and focusing on wealth first when I read this one let me read off my bullet points I tell my creative friends to have a hobby outside of music for your mental health okay health is physical mental emotional right it doesn't just have to be physical it's all of the aspects of your health, that trifecta, physical, emotional, mental. For your mental health, I would strongly encourage you to get a hobby outside of music. So for me, right, I completely fund my lifestyle by engineering, working in studios, working on movie sets. And sometimes, It gets very depressing because I'm also a music artist, but I do have to spend so much time, you know, like it's, it's what I love. It's also what I like to do for fun, but it's also what I need to do to pay the bills. So there's, there's some like division that needs to happen in my, there's some cart compartmentalizing that I need to happen in my own life that I just haven't been the best at doing. So, you know, that's, that's where I need to work on, but My point being is that my entire life was just music, 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 and I was literally not doing anything if it had nothing to do with music. And I finally got to a point where I realized, you know, I love music and it's a big part of my life, but this is not all that I am. What else do I like to do? I like to read. Let me read some books. And not just books about the music industry and books about marketing, you know? I like reading fiction novels. Let me read that because it's different from music and it's feeding my brain something like I get as much as I love music, 
because it's basically in every facet of my life, there was a period and I'm kind of coming out of it now, but there's a period where I was very bored with it and it was putting me in a bad space mentally because it was all I had. But I know that I'm more than just music, even though I love it with all of my being, right? But, you know, I like to read. Let me not read music books today. Let's read a fictional book or let's, my current book right now that I'm reading is Thirst by Scott Harrison. It's about a guy who used to be a club promoter and now he's turned into a charity water organizer. Hush, Katniss. She's really going through it and it's really irritating me because she's just so horny. It's very annoying. It's very annoying. Hush. So anyway, what else do I like to do? I like to cook. Let me focus more on trying new recipes, you know, and let me take a few extra hours, not worrying about, okay, food is just fuel. So I don't need to have too much fun with it. Let me also have fun with my food. Hold on real quick. She's just like really annoying me. She's being loud with her hoe calls to the outdoors. But anyway, so yeah, I like to cook. Let me have a day where I'm just excited about trying new dishes and new meals. And I'm not worried about the budget of the food. I do worry about that. But you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not worried about how much time this is going to take away from the music if I'm spending all my energy cooking. It's just, I like to cook, you know, or I like to go outside and walk. Something that is actually really bad is the fact that we spend hours upon hours in a room that's usually blacked out and usually a bunch of artificial lighting, LEDs, and we don't see the changing of the day. And that can be very depressing. Like I'll go in when it's sunny, and I'll come out when it's dark and I've absorbed none of that natural light. And it really was affecting me and my mental health. And it would make me exhausted if I didn't get time in nature. So I would say, you know, to all my creative friends out there, get a hobby outside of music. Our regular job is music. Regular people have regular jobs. Their hobby is music. You see where I'm going with this? So my other point says music can't be all that you do and all that you are. Create a work schedule or at least give yourself one day off every five to six days, no matter what. Stand on it. Stand on your rest days. So something else that happens in this industry, if you're working as a producer, audio engineer, songwriter, something like that is we don't necessarily know when our money is coming. So we tend to want to take everything that's coming our way. But what happens is we never have a dedicated rest day to ourselves. And if you're anything like me, right, I was very drained by that because I was giving so much energy to everybody else, but I wasn't giving myself a day or two to do things that I liked or to just focus on Lexi. So I would encourage you to give yourself a day off you can have it be like a consistent thing. Like for me, I've gotten back to not wanting to work on Sundays. I'll work on some Sundays, but I've gotten back to a point where I don't want to work on Sundays because it's just, it's beautiful outside. I don't want to be stuck in a dark building recording somebody whose music I don't care about, who's not even that good, honestly. It's a little bit of mean girl energy coming through right there, but I'm not excited about their work because I would rather be tending to myself, you know? And when I have time that I have tended to myself, I'm a lot nicer to everybody else around me. So for me, it's Sunday and Monday. Most people are not trying to book. Mm, I can't really say that. Weekends are usually, no, 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 I think that's safe. Sunday because people are preparing to go back to work and then Monday because people, you know, getting over the Monday blues or whatever. But the weekend is the most busy for my job, right? So I try to compensate by, okay, I need, I, I'm mostly going to be making money on these days, but these are my slower days. So let me make these days my rest days because I know I'm not gonna get much business on these days anyway. So for me, it's always a Sunday and I try to also get Monday as well if I can. For you, if it's not that concrete, maybe it could be every five days, maybe it could be every six days maybe every seven days and then on the eighth day you rest, you know, like just create something for you so that you can have your mental health 
And um, if you're going to the gym three to five times, like I recommended in the routine section, then you're taking care of your physical health. And then emotional health, make sure you're keeping in touch with your friends and your family. Talk to people on the phone. I'm really bad about this and it makes my mental health suffer a lot of times because I don't talk to people. I don't, you know, have social time. All of my social time is linked to people who are in music. And so, you know, I just need, I just need to compartmentalize and I just need different, different categories in my life outside of music. That's how I like to put it. But let's move on to the next one. It looks like my YouTube is running very slowly. I'm so sorry if anyone is tuned in live on YouTube. It just looks like it's not really like it seems like it's lagging but the next one right number four creating excuses for why you can't do something rather than finding two to three solutions for each issue that will help you to succeed artist growth tips wrote instead of creating excuses as to why we can't build an audience try to follow a simple rule for every excuse force yourself to look for two to three solutions to the problem. This one, what is that other point? Was it number two? Being overtly negative, this goes in with that. So being overtly negative and then creating excuses for why you can't do something, these two things go hand in hand and this is causing some of y'all to ruin and self-sabotage yourselves. When you focus on the bad, you get more bad because that's all you're giving your energy to. And like I mentioned in the section about being overtly negative all the time, when you change your focus, you change your life. Not to sound like some cliche, you know, life coach online, but when you change your focus, you change your life. If you are focusing on all of the bad, more bad is going to come because that's what you're paying attention to. You can't even focus on the good because you're giving all of your energy, your time, your attention to the bad. Give your energy, your time, and attention to the good and see how much better of an outlook on life you have. Creating excuses for why you can't do something rather than finding two of these solutions. And this goes back to the example I gave of, I've dealt with people who, I, I let you have a grace period. You get up to a month to feel sorry for yourself about something. After that, as your friend, we need to be seeing some differences. We need to be seeing some growth. And I just had this conversation with a client yesterday. He asked me, have you ever cut people off in this pursuit of music? And I'm like, yeah, I have cut people off because the mindsets didn't, didn't match. Either it was a negativity thing or it was a, we have different work ethics and we have different ideas of where we want to be in life in certain time periods and the activities that we're doing all the time right now i can't do them as much so now we are no longer compatible as friends or you're not understanding where i'm coming from so i've just agreed to disagree and then i distance myself you know what i mean so making excuses for why you can't do something i really I really don't like being around that type of energy because like I mentioned before as well, as artists, we have to have some level of delusion and there's already so many people telling us that what we're doing is stupid. There's already so many people telling us that what we're doing is not worthwhile, that it's not going to make money and that we should get a regular job like everybody else. We already have enough of that energy. So then to surround myself with people who have an excuse, who have a problem for every solution I give them, it's just very draining, you know, creating excuses for why you can't do something rather than finding solutions for those issues. That's what's going to keep you from succeeding because you're focusing on the wrong things. If you would give as much energy to a solution that you do an issue, I wonder how much further along you would be, right? And I had to distance myself from people who always had issues for my solutions because it's not fun being around somebody like that. And I have enough doubt around me. I don't need you adding fuel to the flame. I don't need you telling me what I can't do. I need people around me who will say, wow, ooh, they might look at me a little crazy, 
But at the end of the day, they'll sit down and they'll say, okay, I hear what you're saying. This is where we can make some things possible. Those are the kinds of conversations I like to have. Not, well, are you sure? Well, what if this happens? What if da 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 da? Unless those what ifs are, what if you got to spend your money on a photo shoot instead of a video shoot? Unless we're having those kind of what ifs, I don't want to have certain conversations with people because I need, I need a certain level of delusion. Okay, I need positivity. And I need solutions and I need ideas. I need ideas. I don't need issues. I need ideas. I don't need issues from you. So creating excuses for why you can't do something. Keep your excuses. You and your excuses can stay away from me. I don't like having excuses around me. Now life happens. That's a different conversation. Life happens. But like I said, We are grown and the harsh truth is that, especially if we're not making the money we wanna make, we really don't have time to sit around feeling sorry for ourselves. The longer that we do that, the harder it becomes to dig ourselves out of that hole, the lower and lower we get if we allow ourselves to stay in that negative space. And I've seen that from people, I try to explain it to people, they don't wanna listen or maybe they just feel like they're too far down to come back up I don't know but you know at some point if I don't see the change I can't have you around me because I've had to pull myself out of a lot of tough mental situations I didn't have people around like I wanted because I knew the mindset that I needed around me was just lacking from my life so Before I go rambling on about that, let's go ahead and get into this last one. (laughs) Number five, number five, things that could ruin your career as an artist, not being on as many streaming platforms as possible. This one is more practical. The caption reads, the reality is if you're not on as many distribution platforms as possible, in 2019 that's when they that's when this post came out that's how long i've had this in my saves but it's 2023 if you are not on as many distribution platforms as possible you are limiting your potential audience who knows your track could be doing bad in the u.s but do amazingly well in asia on an asian distributor be accessible and this is something that i didn't even think of i never even thought to research I never even thought to research distributors outside of the US. That right there is a game changer. And I've had this saved in my on my Instagram saves since 2019 apparently is when they wrote this post. That is ridiculous to me. That's crazy. So, on a side note, I need to look into foreign distribution. Because why am I only worried about American United States distribution? Oh my gosh. But for this one, right, not being on as many streaming platforms as possible. Um, I've had friends who say that, you know, they want to take like the Taylor Swift route and not put their music on Spotify and only be available here, here, here. And I'm like, that's dumb. Don't do that because you're new. Nobody knows you. You're not on a Taylor Swift level yet. We're not on a Taylor Swift level yet. It's great to have those ambitions, but let's be honest. Let's be realistic about where we are and take realistic steps towards being like what Taylor Swift can do, right? So if you are limiting where you are, distribution-wise, platform-wise, when it comes to your music, you're sabotaging yourself. There's no reason why, like I said, you're new, When people do give you the energy of checking you out, why would you make it so hard for them by only being available on select platforms? Oh, I don't want to use Spotify because Spotify only pays a tenth of a penny per stream. Apple Music is not that much better. Tidal is better, but it's not that much better. You know what I mean? What if your potential listener is on Spotify? So now you've just alienated those people who use Spotify because you decided to follow something that a major artist 
has done or set precedence for when you are not yet on a major artist level. So when I go through my distributor, which is CD Baby, when I go through that distribution process, they have a page where they ask, where do you want this music to be distributed to? And there's like a checklist of over 30 different platforms. And of course, the most popular ones are at the top, Spotify, Apple, Tidal, YouTube, Amazon, I guess. Those are at the top, of course. And then there's like all of these other lesser known or smaller platforms, but platforms that made it to CD Baby. And it says, do you want to distribute to all paid platforms only? Or do you want to distribute to everything, paid and unpaid? And I click paid and unpaid because I'm still in the discovery phase. I'm still waiting to be discovered. So wherever you find me, I don't care where you find me, I just need you to be able to find me. When you hear the word Lexi, I should be somewhere that you can get access to. And if I'm not, then that's an obstacle that I need to work out for me as an artist. Maybe my distribution game is not good. Maybe my marketing is not good because I'm not reaching you. I'm not getting you where you have access to, you know? So if you're a new artist, people aren't checking for your music like that. When people do check for you, it should not be hard for them to find you. So put yourself everywhere. I'm on YouTube, I'm on Google, I'm on Spotify, I'm on Apple, I'm on iHeartRadio, I'm on Amazon, I am on YouTube Music. I I could do better with SoundCloud. I've abandoned SoundCloud, no lie. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I have my own website, you know. I'm on, there's like a Chinese site that I'm on, I don't remember what it's called, but all those 20 unpaid platforms that they asked me if I want to be on, yes, put me in, coach because I don't know where you'll find me from, but I wanna make it as easy as possible for you to find me. And that will make a world of difference between yourself and other artists who get too big headed. And there's a difference between having confidence and just being stupid. Um, (laughs) um, You can have confidence, but you also gotta be realistic about the fact that you are a new artist and nobody is checking for you like that. So don't make it hard when they do go checking for you. That's all I gotta say on that, right? And so that concludes all of the five points. Let's read through those again. Things that could ruin your career as an artist. One, not creating a routine for your career, which includes studying music business, money management, perfecting your craft and growing your audience. Number two, something that could ruin your career, being overtly negative, jealous and spiteful towards others. And overtly means like outwardly, like obviously negative, jealous, or spiteful. Number three, things that could ruin your career, neglecting your own health and focusing on wealth first. We get so caught up in this hustle, in this hustle culture that we forget that there is no money to be made if the thing that is needed to make the money goes out of commission. That's you, that's your body, that's your health, your mental, your emotional. So take care of yourself. Number four, things that could ruin your career, Creating excuses for why you can't do something rather than finding solutions for each issue that will help you succeed. And lastly, things that can ruin your career, not being on as many streaming platforms as possible. So I do hope that you enjoyed this Lex chat for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope it's inspired you to think more about the topic for yourself and how you can apply some of the things we talked about. You can catch these chats live on Instagram at LexiATL to be part of the conversation or catch the replays on Mondays at 8 a.m. on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio and YouTube. Wherever you're watching or listening, please like, subscribe, follow and engage with the content by leaving comments and reviews. If you'd like to go the extra mile in supporting me, then please consider becoming a patron of mine at patreon.com slash LexiATL, where you can make monthly pledges and every bit of support truly does help me to be able to create more valuable content for you. Thank you to my patrons, Mr. Flat Shoals and Alton Thomas. Thank y'all so much. And remember, 
I will be performing for the Down and Dirty Artist Showcase presented by Abriel BTV. This event is going to be held in Atlanta on Wednesday, May 10th at 8 p.m. The address is 901 Donald Lee Hallowell in Atlanta, Georgia. You can find ticket information on my website at www.lexiatl.com. And I want to give a final mention to the trivia and the giveaway that I have going at least through the first week of May. Every day, Monday through Friday, I'm asking trivia questions about my upcoming album on my Instagram stories. The first person to send me the correct answer will win the cash prize for the day. That means if you're the first person to answer correctly every day, you could win each day of the week. That means you could win up to Well, now, if you're just joining the competition, you can win up to $50. We got $50 in the pot. That's going to be replenished when the new month starts. But right now we got $50 in the pot and I'm sure we could all use a little extra cash. This is an easy way to make a little bit of extra money. You know how you play is you stay tuned into my Instagram stories at Lexi ATL. That's at L E X C A T L. The answers for every question can be found on my Instagram page at Lexi ATL on my website at LexiATL.com or in the weekly email newsletters, which you can sign up for through my website, LexiATL.com. I've put out press articles about the songs from the album. You read the articles to find the answers. You pay attention to the pictures that are the single cover arts and you pay attention to the names of the songs and those will provide you all the answers you need to answer the trivia correctly if you're the first person to answer the question correctly you will win the cash prize for the day and i will send your prize money through cash app so again good luck to everyone who is going to participate Thank you so much to everyone and congratulations to everyone who has already participated and won their money. I hope y'all can have fun with this and win some money. I want to give y'all some money. So yeah, let's keep playing. But thank y'all so much for tuning in to Lex Chat this week. My name is Lexi. Until next time, peace. Got up on my feet just before the beep. Listen to my stomach, it was snoring. I forgot to eat before I went to sleep. Then on my teeth just before I make my exit I know today it would be a good day Pick up my bed